Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank Carmen for the introduction and the organizers for inviting me to talk this morning and to thank Bahamas for the warm welcome that we've all received. My topic is the HIV epidemic in the Caribbean and the question is, is the tide turning? I'm going to look at the epidemic its key characteristics, review the factors driving the epidemic, assess briefly our response, and note some challenges. Now, in the Caribbean, we have a lot in common, but there's also a lot of diversity. And our, we have roughly 35 million people, but there's significant population movement within the Caribbean and between the Caribbean and elsewhere and as many as 20 million visitors annually. And as we know, many come for sea, sand, sun, and sex. We know the global situation. Um, at the current pace, we're not going to be able to treat ourselves out of the epidemic unless we can identify the people who are infected and reach them with treatment and at the same time we need to reduce the number of new infections. In the Caribbean we have nearly a quarter million people living with HIV and nearly 20,000 people newly infected every year. We cannot go on like this. And when you look at our HIV prevalence it is twice as high as North America, Central America, or South America. So we have a lot to do to slow this epidemic. Now, some of us will recall this famous slide in 1999 from CAREC, where we looked at the new annual AIDS cases, case rates, and you could see in red, the Caribbean was heading for the sky, while in North America, the curve was heading down, and in Latin America, it was flat. And this, of course, gave us great concern at that time. And if you even looked at the turn of the century, our annual AIDS cases were going up and up. And this was the challenge at the turn of the century. In those days, the estimates of how many people were living in the Caribbean with HIV were twice as high, half a million people. And in Haiti, we were hearing of adult HIV prevalence in the city of 12% and 5% in rural areas. So you could see the dramatic challenge that we faced. However, with the new estimates that UNAIDS has developed more recently, you can see that the number of persons living with HIV in the Caribbean has been estimated to be roughly the same between 2001 and 2009, this quarter million people. So in fact, it is possible that our estimates of 10 years ago were overestimates. And these are the estimates that I have from UNAIDS showing the number of new HIV infections. I understand that by next week, UNAIDS may come out with new estimates, but you can see 1990, it was estimated 25,000 new HIV infections, 100,000 people living with HIV. That doubled to 55,000 in 1993, and then it came back down to 25,000 in 1995, and we're now at the quarter million people living and perhaps 18,000 new infections. But when you look at how these infections are distributed in the Caribbean, you can see that half of the people living with HIV are found in Haiti, a quarter in the Dominican Republic, and 13% in Jamaica, that is 87% of the persons living with HIV are in just three countries. And we need to single out Cuba, where it's remarkable with their size of population 
that they have so few people living with HIV. And of course, they have been extremely proactive in tackling their epidemic. Now, this is a slide from the UNAIDS Global Report on AIDS in 2010. And in it, they look at adult HIV prevalence and assess that in four countries, there was an increase in adult HIV prevalence, while in three was stable, three there was a decline. Now, I would caution how we interpret this slide, but certainly in Haiti, you can see at the bottom, 2.6 in 201 and 1.9%. Certainly there was a decline. Guyana, I suspect so also. But if we look at somewhere like the Dominican Republic, then you can see while they have it stable there, if you look at the demographic health survey reports that they have done in 2002 and 2007, you can see in the white bar that the HIV prevalence actually declined from 1% to 0.8%, and there were declines also in rural and urban areas. The only two countries to do the demographic health surveys, which are population-based HIV testing are the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And if you look at the Dominican Republic, the darker the color here, it means the higher the adult HIV prevalence in the particular region. So at the top left-hand point of your screen, which is in the northwest, you can see that, that in that region, HIV prevalence is over 1%. And it's interesting that that is a section also, you can see a similar map for Haiti, where the darker it is, the higher the prevalence, and you can see the adjoining regions there both show high prevalence. Now, when we look at the male-female ratio in the early days of the epidemic in the Caribbean, far more men were affected than women. Now, it is approximately the same number uh, or the same proportion of men and women being affected. However, this varies by country. So you will find in certain countries at the left of the screen, the Bahamas, 60% are females. Haiti, Belize. Whereas at the other end, Suriname, Cuba, Trinidad, Jamaica, just over 30% are in fact females. So you can see that there are differences in how the epidemic is playing out in different countries. And this just captures, in four countries, HIV sentinel surveillance among pregnant women. And you can see in red, that is Haiti, and in green, Guyana, the prevalence in the antenatal clinic attendees has come down nicely. In the Bahamas, it has been more or less stable, just below 3%, and in Jamaica, just over 1, 1 1.5%. So we need to get this down further if we're really going to control the epidemic. And what is particularly worrying is that among those most affected are the sex workers and men who have sex with men, and HIV prevalence is far too high. It has come down among sex workers somewhat, but among men who have sex with men, we have a serious problem. So if we look at other groups, prisoners between 2 to 4% affected, but in Puerto Rico, where most of the prisoners have been tested, you can see it's as high as 7%. So there is a significant challenge there as well. And among those who use crack cocaine use, which in fact was among the first described in Bahamas, then you can see that in these studies, you, we have a problem in certain persons who are, who are using crack cocaine.
Now let's look at the epidemic curves that we've been able to get from the different countries. And this is a very impressive curve. In blue, the HIV cases you can see peaked early, as early as 1987. And about eight years later, in 1995, you can see the AIDS curve peaking. And what was driving the epidemic in Bermuda was primar primar primarily injecting drug use. In Puerto Rico, you can see that the curve peaked about 1992, and you can see deaths coming down. But you can see that that trajectory of the tail, as Dr. Fauci was talking, it's not coming down enough. And this shows you that in Puerto Rico, nearly 30% of the, it was male injecting drug users primarily, but you can see that among men who have sex with men in blue, that the proportion of persons affected is increasing. This shows the HIV non-AIDS infections in the Bahamas. And you can see here also that there is a peak in the early 1990s. And it appears as if the curve is now coming down, but it is not going right down to the flat. So that we will continue to see spread I'm using the Sentinel surveillance for antenatal clinic attenders to demonstrate the peaking of the curve in the Dominican Republic in 1995. And then if we go to Trinidad, you can see that their peak did not occur until 2004. And you can see that the number of annual cases reported remains high. So the epidemic is peaking later and staying higher in that country. And this is Barbados, and it's hard to really say there's a definite peak here because the curve is remaining very high, and this is a worrying sign. If you look at Jamaica, there does appear to be a peak around nine, 2005, and it appears to be coming down, but it still remains high. What is interesting is if we look at the HIV prevalence among STD clinic attenders, there was a peak in this group in 1999, which was earlier than the 2006, which is the peak shown in the general reporting for HIV in Jamaica. Now the incidence that we measured in this group was approximately 0.7% in the early 90s. And this is the curve that we got. And this just shows in Jamaica again, HIV prevalence being fairly steady among the antenatal clinic attenders. In Guyana, again, it may have peaked in 2006, but it remains too high. So a big challenge remains here in terms of the prevalence. But really what we want to do is look at the incidence, and you can see a comparison between Haiti and Jamaica here. The axes are not the same, but you can see that there was a very steep rise in the early 90s with the HIV incidence in Haiti, and then it came down. Whereas in Jamaica, according to UNAIDS estimates, there's just been a very slow, it didn't peak as high, but just a very slow decline. And similarly, in the Dominican Republic, a slow decline in the HIV incidence curves. So to summarize this, it seems as if the epidemics peaked early in Bermuda and Puerto Rico, where injecting drug use was very uh, important driver. Peaked in 1992 in Haiti, 94 in the Bahamas, and then the Dominican Republic, Barbados, Trinidad and Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica and Gaia peaking much later and the curve remaining higher. So we can say that there has been a decline in reported 
HIV non-AIDS cases. In most of the countries, and a decline in HIV incidence in some, and the epidemic appears generally to have peaked. However, the number of new HIV infections continues to be high in several countries, and the prevalence remains far too high among those most at risk, especially men who have sex with men. There are many drivers. There are social vulnerability. We don't have the time to go through all of these and the risk behavior. I mean, with all these drivers, it's a wonder that the epidemic has even peaked. Commercial sex is readily available. It's not regulated. And this is throughout the Caribbean. Transactional sex is also very common. And this is a survey in Jamaica where 20% reported giving or receiving a money and another 20% reported giving or receiving a gift for sex. And this just reminds us that sexually transmitted infections are important. And this was a survey in Jamaica. And if you just concentrate on the blue bar or the purple bar, you can see that among street sex workers, over 65% of them had at least one sexually transmitted infection. The sex workers in bars and clubs, 40%. Female patrons at these clubs, 30%. And the male patrons, 25%. Other sexually transmitted infections remain important in the region. And this summarizes the reported risk behavior among adults with AIDS in Jamaica. And what is very important is that among 20%, there's no obvious risk factor which shows that it is generalized in the population while concentrating among those most at risk. And what is driving it is the unprotected sex of heterosexual men with sex workers, multiple partners, transactional sex, and in a small minority, crack cocaine use. And as well, unprotected anal intercourse, high rates of bisexuality, which act as a bridge to the general population, injecting drug use in a couple countries, high rates of sexually transmitted infections, and then cultural things. The response. Country programs have led the response with support, and we must state appreciation to our partners. PANCAP, we are aiming for universal access to HIV prevention, treatment, and care, and we need to reduce the numbers by 25%, the mortality and the impact on households. We're doing well with the mortality, but not as well with the new infections and the social impact. And this just shows the scale up of mother to child transmission. Some countries like Trinidad and Tobago are now at 85%. This is a slide which is slightly dated. And you can see that the scale up of treatment has been in the last six years or so impressive, but it needs to go much higher to get universal coverage. And, the, and the, it, sh it shows here that it is differentiated among different countries, but we still have a good way to go. And while deaths have declined, the new HIV infections in red have not declined in the same way. What is interesting is this case fatality curve from Barbados, which seems to suggest that case fatality was coming down before heart treatment, and heart treatment then pushed it down further. And the survival curve is the inverse of this, where you can see more persons are surviving longer. And in red, you can see that women are doing better than men, probably because they are diagnosed early with the screening. We still have significant challenges with policy, stigma, capacity, and meeting our goals. But in particular, I wanted to share this in countries where sex between men is criminalized. It seems as if the HIV rates are higher, and we have to think about this and what it means. And a study in Jamaica showed among men who have sex with men, if they were ever homeless, victims of physical violence, or of lower socioeconomic status, they were twice 
as likely to be HIV infected. And this is an example of showing that vulnerability does make a difference, stigma does make a difference. And we just completed another study which shows we were able to measure incidence and we found an incidence of 6% among the men who have sex with men, comparing with what I said, 0.7% in the early 90s among, men, among persons attending the STD clinic. So we still have a serious problem among those most vulnerable men who have sex with men, and we have to find more effective ways of empowering and supporting the community to take more responsibility for promoting safe sex within the community. We have to provide a more supportive environment and leaders have to promote policy that accepts that adult men who have sex with the men have a right to their sexuality and repeal the Bulgari Act. So in summary, it appears as if the epidemic in the Caribbean has peaked, new cases have declined, mother-to-child transmission has been reduced dramatically, and we've heard that both the Bahamas and in Trinidad, no cases in 2010 of mother-to-child transmission. We are getting persons on treatment, tremendous progress there, but still far to go. Mortality and morbidity has come down, survival and quality of life has improved but those who are most at risk, the prevalence remains high, and we have a lot to do. I should acknowledge all the country programs, UNAIDS, and a whole host of individuals who contributed to this presentation and the data, and I thank you. <laughs>